I told you that you need to learn to accept praise. Remember we talked about that? You don't want to dig your toe in the carpet and say, oh, gosh, you know, it's no big deal. Well, it is a big deal. I want you to learn to own praise. When somebody says, hey, you did a great job, just say thank you. Accept it and own it. One of the things I want you to think about is what sets you apart from the rest of the world. If you want to rise above these toxic people in your life, if you want to not be defined by them, if you don't want to be dragged down by them, if you don't want to be codependent on these people, if you don't want to let them determine who you are, ask yourself, what is it about you that makes you essential in every relationship that you have, in every situation and circumstance that you have? You are not brand X. And you know how to become essential is know something other people don't know. Find out what it is that you uniquely add to a situation and cultivate that. What is it you do better than anybody else? What is it you do better than anybody else? There's an old joke that says, if you want to be a success, You need to do two things. Number one, never tell anybody everything you know. Number two, crickets. Because you don't tell anybody everything you know. Be essential. As a mother, you're essential. You do things nobody but you can do. If you work somewhere in an office, cultivate a skill. That if you're gone, there is a missing element that they can't get by without. And maybe what you do is you become the best utility player there. You're the one that can fix that damn copier. You're the one that knows how to reset all the breakers in the building. You're the one guy that is willing to get up on the roof and get the air conditioners working. You're the one guy that knows the code on the computers that gets the accounting program working, be that person that knows a lot of answers nobody else knows and don't tell everybody everything you know. Be essential and be unique in your knowledge. That makes you essential. Now, I'm talking about strategies here. I'm talking about strategies for getting ahead because what if In this image that I'm talking about, you decide, I want better than what I have. I want more. And I don't care what your currency is. Everybody has a currency. And everybody's currency is a little bit different for them than it is the person next to them. Now, what's currency? Well, money. You know, monetary currency, that's real obvious, right? But even why people want money is different. Some people want money because of what they can buy with it. Some people want money because it represents that the world values them. It's how they keep score. It's not what they can buy with it. I mean, look at Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett lives in Omaha, Nebraska. He lives in a house that is very modest, very middle class. He's lived in it since he didn't have a lot of money, and now he's got billions and billions of dollars. He still lives in the same house. He still drives the same kind of cars. Money to him is not to acquire material things. Money to him obviously represents something else. It's a way of keeping score, and maybe it tells him he's winning. He's accumulating more than someone else. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But ask yourself, what is your currency? You need to know that. It's terribly important that you know what your currency is, and we're going to talk about that some more next week as well. But it's important that you understand When you decide what your image is, ask yourself, what is unique about you? 
What do you know? What can you do? What is your skill set? What is your personality characteristic that is not common, that nobody else knows? And then when you apply it, when you get in the game and you use those essential skills, how do you keep score? What is your currency? That's the only way you're going to know if what you're doing is working or not. Maybe your currency is a closer walk with God. It's a spiritual experience. That's okay. It doesn't have to be about money. It could be your children being successful and happy and fulfilled. That's a great currency. Being closer to God or whatever being you refer to as that being in your life, whether it's God or something else that you feel closer to, that you feel fulfilled, whatever your currency is. Maybe you're to the point that you're not working for rent money anymore. Maybe that's not what's important to you now. Maybe you're past that. You know, Maslow says that we have a hierarchy of needs, and, you know, first is survival. And until we have that covered, we're not interested in much else. But we have all of these different things covered, then we start thinking about actualization, where we start thinking about helping other people, giving to other people. Maybe you're at that point where, You want to define your uniqueness in what you can do for other people. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to tell you what your currency is. I'm asking you to define what your currency is. That's what's terribly important for you to know. And once you decide, okay, I know what my image is. I know who I am. And part of that image is the right to set up boundaries and get these toxic people out of my life. It doesn't matter whether they meant well or not. They're not working for me. It's not helping me in the pursuit of healthy goals. These people, maybe they'll work for somebody else. They don't work for me. Our chemistry isn't right. We don't click. Maybe they're just bad intent people, and you damn sure need to get rid of them. But you have the right to control your relationships and get people out of your life. That's part of your image. Control your relationships. Some people say, oh, I don't want to talk to this person because when you say hello, it's going to be an hour. You know what? If that's true, you're not running your own life because you should be able to say, hey, it was good seeing you. Sorry, I can't visit right now. I got to go. They go, oh, well, and get offended. Well, then let them get offended. If you need to go to pick up your kids, You don't need to hide in a broom closet when you see this person coming because they yammer on forever. Take control of your life. Don't hide. When you see them, say hi. They go, oh, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I need to tell you something. Hold that thought. I don't have time to visit right now. I need to go pick up my kids, so I will see you later. Control your own relationships. Don't be a victim. That's part of this image I'm warning you. Don't take control of your life. Part of your image is you have the right to set boundaries, you have the right to control your relationships, you have the right to get these toxic people out of your life. That's very, very important. That's part of your image. Part of your image is deciding what it is that's unique about you. Part of your image is deciding what your currency is. And then once you know those things and you say, okay, he wants me to star my own life, what's my plan? What's my plan? Don't go through this life winging it. I'm not saying not to be spontaneous. I think being spontaneous is great, but you need to have a plan. Let's start fresh. You can be thinking about Omicron or whatever it is, or you can decide, you know what? I don't know what all that's going to bring, but what I do know is I'm going to have a plan. I need to recognize that small differences accumulate across time. And at the end of a month, or three months, or six months, they add up to some big results. You don't need to leap tall buildings at a single bound. You just need to make small changes day after day after day. And to do that, you need to have a plan. 